Adhikarna 12, Agnihotra, etc. Sutra 16, Agnihotra di tu tat karya yaiva tat darshanat. Two, but Agnihotra di Agnihotra, etc. Tat karyaya are conducive to that result. Eva, surely. Tat darshanat, for so it is revealed. Translation. But Agnihotra, etc., conduce to the very same result, for so it is revealed in the Upanishads. The conclusion arrived at about the non-attachment and destruction of sin in the case of the man of knowledge was extended to the non-attachment and destruction of virtue as well. Lest it be inferred that this extension covers all kinds of virtue, it is being refuted by the aphorism, but daily agnihotra, etc. The word but refutes the misconception. The obligatory daily duties like agnihotra enjoined in the Vedas are meant for that very result. The idea is that their result is the same as that of knowledge. How can this be so? From such Upanishadic texts as The Brahmanas seek to know it through the study of the Vedas, sacrifices, charity, and austerity. Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 4.4.22 Opponent Since knowledge and works produce divergent results, they cannot reasonably have the same result. Vedantin. That creates no difficulty. For just as curds and poison known to produce fever and death respectively become tasteful and nourishing when mixed with sugar and mantra, similarly religious work also, when associated with knowledge, may lead to liberation. Opponent. Since liberation has no beginning, how can it be said to be an effective work? Vedantin. That objection is hollow, since work helps from a distance, that is, indirectly, in producing the result. As work leads gradually to knowledge, it is said by courtesy to lead to liberation itself. Accordingly, the statement that knowledge and work produce the same result refers to the work that had preceded knowledge, for the knower of Brahman can have no such right as Agnihotra, etc., after enlightenment, because as a result of the realization of the unity of the self with Brahman, that cannot be the object of any injunction, the man of enlightenment has walked out of the pale of scriptures. But so far as meditation on the qualified Brahman is concerned, a subsequent performance of Agnihotra, etc., is possible since the agentship for such a meditator remains intact. Even so, when these are performed without any motive, and hence have no separate result, they can well be associated with meditation. Opponent. Well then, to what action does this statement about the non-attachment and destruction of the results of works refer to? And to what action does this Vedic assignment of results to friends, foes, and others refer to as stated in the following sentence found in a certain branch of the Vedas? His sons inherit his wealth, the friends acquire the merits, and the foes get the demerits. Kaushitaki Brahmana 1.4 Hence, the aphorist replies, Sutra 17 Atonya pi yeke shamu bayo ataha. Apart from these, anya, another action, api, also, he, certainly, exists.
Acacia. According to some people, the assignment to friends, foes, and others refers to this. Ubhayo. According to both Jaimini and Badarayana. Translation. Besides these, there is also another kind of good action with regard to which some people make the assignment according to both Jaimini and Badarayana. Apart from these obligatory rites like Agnihotra, etc., other good works surely exist that are performed with a motive for results. Of these, the appropriation has been indicated by people of a certain branch of the Vedas in The Friends Acquire the Merits, etc., and by saying, in the very same way, there are non-attachment and destruction of the others, that is, virtues, as well. Brahma Sutra 4.1.14 The non-attachment and destruction of these very works have been ascertained. Thus, both the teachers Jaimini and Badarayana agree in accepting the view that this kind of works, done with a desire, do not help in the generation of knowledge. Namaste. So this is great. This completely defeats the Neo-Advaitans. Why? Because they say, once you know about Brahman, in other words, you have some literary knowledge or verbal knowledge, uh, Brahma Vidya, then you can forget all about sacrifices and sadhana and offerings and prayers and stuff like that. Hey, you're Brahman, you're the man. So, <laughs> there's such nonsense. They don't realize that the whole yoga system is an integrated whole. From karma yoga to bhakti yoga to raja yoga to jnana yoga at the top. Here's our good old chart of the four states of consciousness, the views, vada, and the yogas associated with them. So one cannot simply jump up to jnana. One has to go through the intermediate steps and complete them. And there are symptoms of completion for each of these steps. For example, when you are through, when you are mature, in karma yoga, basically all your material problems are solved. You have sufficient wealth, you have a social identity in some society of religion or knowledge that protects you, that assists you and provides a social platform for your existence so you can go on with your sadhana. And then by development of bhakti, to the stage of spontaneous love. You solve all your emotional and mental problems, you know, addictions and so on, by having an ever fresh, ever ready source of unconditional love in your relationship with Shiva or Shakti or any form of God that you choose, according to your tastes. It's completely up to you. Then, through pacification of desire and focusing of the mind on the object of love, this leads naturally to meditation. Now, what is meditation? It means forcing your mind to concentrate on something? And no, no. Maybe in the very beginning stages. But that's not sustainable. Try it. You'll see. Try to focus your mind by will, and you'll find that the moment you're inattentive, Boom, the mind jumps off like a monkey to the other side of the universe. <laughs> so it's not through will, but through love, through the appreciation of the beauty and other good qualities of the beloved, that concentration of the mind happens naturally, organically, effortlessly, by attraction, not by force. See, that's the secret of love. 
Love cannot be legislated. Love cannot be demanded, cannot be ordered or legislated. Huh? Maybe the sacrifices can. Yes, and they are in the Vedas. One must do daily Agnihotra and daily Sandhya at the three junctions of time, between night and morning, just before sunrise, at noon, and in the evening, just after sunset. So those three times are the most propitious for what? Chanting Gayatri Mantra, doing puja, such as deity worship, and so on and so forth. These things are the prerequisites for meditation. They lead to meditation. And therefore, in the Vedas, they are said to be as good as meditation, or to even to deliver enlightenment, liberation, moksha. But of course, the actual scene is that these are stepping stones, necessary but not sufficient for complete enlightenment. Necessary but not sufficient is the key phrase here. So it means that performance of rituals like Agnihotra and so on, development of transcendental love through bhakti and devotional service, and the experience of meditation by concentration of the mind on the lotus feet of the beloved deity, huh, lead ultimately to jnana, realization, which is not something that can be done but a blessing that one has to earn. And we earn it through our sadhana, through our sincere service, through our love, which develops in good time to devotion and devotion to meditation and meditation to realization of emptiness, sushupti, and so on. Then, when all the upadis have been removed, when all the obstacles have been conquered through the various yoga processes, Shiva and or Shakti uh, notice this. huh? <laughs> Not like they're far away someplace and they don't know what's going on. <laughs> they are within you. They know you better than you know yourself. And they know when you are qualified. And the moment that occurs, they will come to you with the blessings of enlightenment and liberation. Try to understand. As my Adi Guru said, don't you try to see God, but become such that God wants to see you. That is the success of spiritual life. That is the key to the final enlightenment and complete moksha. And he says, however, there's one qualification, that when one performs these different sacrifices and other yogic processes, one should be in the light of knowledge. What does that mean? One should know that the ultimate goal is realization of Brahman the disappearance of the individual self. One should have confidence in the ways of the scripture and in the intentions of God to bless the living creatures with enlightenment as soon as they deserve it. And one should have the confidence that these yogic methods indeed do work. Uh, see, the neo advaitins want to take everything into their own hands and jump up artificially to the platform of jnana without any of the qualifying <laughs> processes. Uh, so, of course, they pretend for a while to be a jnani and then again they fall down into conditioned life. Actually, they're in conditioned consciousness all along. They never really get out of it. They're just pretending to be enlightened for some cheap social adoration and whatnot. So don't fall into this trap. Don't take the shortcut. Take the long, slow road because it's sure. It's certain. It's guaranteed to be effective. Why? 
because it's stated in the scriptures. And we trust the scriptures. We know from experience that whatever they say is correct. And it actually leads to enlightenment. So when we read something in the scripture, we should take it seriously. Huh? Like when I did the series on Mundak Upanishad, I looked up the word Mundaka. It means shaved head. I said, hey, we're supposed to be shaved head monks, sannyasis. Huh? Not this, who is this long hair business, you know? The, <laughs> the great sage from the demigods, planets, or something like this. I mean, what is this? It's, you see it in paintings or something like that. That doesn't mean we should be like that. Those sages are born from Lord Brahma at the beginning of the universe. They can do whatever they want. <laughs> in our stage, we have to cultivate purity, simplicity, and harmlessness, most of all. So cleanliness, mercy, knowledge of the scriptures, practice of all the different yoga procedures, and so on, are absolutely necessary for us. And we cannot skip over them. We cannot jump over them without seriously jeopardizing our chances for enlightenment in the future. Because to try to take a shortcut and jump up and maybe get some kind of blessing from some phony guru or something is offensive. It indicates a lack of respect, a lack of confidence, and a lack of trust in God and Shakti. And so we should instead follow their instructions in the scriptures. You know, it's so simple, like my Adi Guru used to say, it is simple if you are simple. <laughs> but for complicated egotists, it becomes impossibly complex. Why? Because they are too complex. The heart is basically simple and based on love. Therefore, the heart is mentioned as the location of Atman, of Brahman, of the Lord and his consort. And they are the ones who bring us to final liberation. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.